This is one of the most bizarre airplane stories of all time. A flight that is hard to believe that really happened. A plane full of passengers at an incredible speed of 17 feet and a pilot sucked out of a cockpit window. In the cockpit, three flight attendants tried to hold the pilot on his feet. If they let him go, his body will be sucked into the plane's engine all while the plane is still in the air. In only a few minutes, the plane can crash. The lives of 87 passengers and crew are in real danger if the plane doesn't land immediately. What followed can be only described as a terrifying story, and a lot of the passengers probably said their last prayers right then. In today's video, you will hear the story of how a young man's bravery saved a pilot's life, and how the co-pilot's awareness saved the lives of 87 other people. Without further ado, let's dive right into it. Flight 5390 was a British Airways flight that departed Birmingham Airport in England for Malaysia Airport in Spain the morning of June 10th, 1990. On board were 81 passengers and six crew members, bringing the total number of passengers to 87. The plane took off from Birmingham Airport at 8.20 a.m. local time and was flown by Tim Lancaster, an experienced pilot with more than 11,000 flight hours at the time. Also in the cockpit was the co-pilot, Alistair Atchison, who was also an experienced pilot with more than 7,000 flight hours under his belt. 20 minutes later, there was a loud bang in the cockpit, and what followed will no doubt be one of the scariest minutes of Tim Lancaster's life. The loud bang that passengers heard in the cockpit was the sound of the cockpit window being sucked away from the rest of the plane. The door separating the cabin from the cockpit was also blown open and the passengers could see what was going on. The cockpit was immediately filled with condensation and the plane began to decompress. The air from the decompression forced Lancaster out of the window and would have been blown away if flight attendant Nigel Ogden hadn't acted fast and managed to hold on to his legs. It was by pure luck that Ogden had been in the cockpit just as Lancaster was being sucked out of the window. A time difference of only a couple of seconds would have proved fatal for the pilot. While his legs were being held by the flight attendant in the cockpit, the rest of Lancaster's body was out of the plane exposed to the harsh weather. He was bent in a U-shape around the window and his face was banging against the side of the plane. By this time, Ogden could barely hold on to the captain because he had cut his hand badly when he reached the grab hold of the captain. Another crew member, Simon Rogers, strapped himself securely into the pilot's seat and then grabbed Lancaster's legs, relieving Ogden. He was later joined by the chief steward, John Heward. Through all this, the passengers could see everything that was happening because the connecting door was open. I can't imagine how much fear and terror they felt watching the events unfold in front of their eyes. The plane wasn't equipped with oxygen for everyone on board, so the co-pilot, Alistair Etchison, put on an oxygen mask and initiated a rapid descent to enable the plane to reach an altitude with sufficient air pressure. Then he re-engaged autopilot and sent out a distress call. Because of the loud noise from the wind, he was unable to hear the instructions from the air traffic control center for the first few minutes. No doubt, the difficulty in communication made it difficult for both the co-pilot and the air traffic control center to initiate emergency protocols. By this time, the crew members who were holding on to Lancaster believed him to be dead, but Atchison instructed them to keep holding on to him because he feared that letting him go would result in his body striking and potentially damaging the plane's left wing or engine. So, the crew members valiantly continued to hold on to their captain. Finally, Atchison was able to get clearance from air traffic control to land at Southampton Airport. He instructed the passengers to prepare for an emergency landing and shortly afterward landed the airplane successfully at 8.55 a.m. The entire flight lasted just over half an hour, but I'm sure that for everyone on board, it felt like a lifetime. Nigel Ogden reported that he flew over the control column 
without thinking to grab hold of Captain Lancaster. He said, I jumped over the control column and grabbed him around his waist to avoid him going out completely. His shirt had been pulled off his back and his body was bent upwards, doubled over around the top of the aircraft. His face was banging against the window with blood coming out of his nose and the side of his head. His arms were flailing. Most terrifyingly, his eyes were wide open. I'll never forget that sight as long as I'm alive. The passengers had a clear view of the cockpit and could see everything that was happening. They watched as their co-pilot fought bravely to balance the air pressure in the plane and then battled to get clearance to make an emergency landing. Margaret Simmons, who was a passenger on the flight, spoke to reporters and said, I could see a body hanging out of the window with two men and a woman hanging on to his legs. Investigations into the incident by the UK's Air Accidents Investigation Branch showed that when the windshield and windows of the window were being fixed a mere 27 hours before the flight, the fitter in charge had used the wrong sizes of bolts to secure the windows as well as the windshield. The bolts were too small to serve the purpose and so they were unable to withstand the difference in air pressure between the cockpit and the atmosphere. This was the reason the windows were sucked away from the plane. The incident occurred with zero fatalities. Captain Lancaster miraculously managed to survive with nothing more than frostbite and a fractured arm, thumb, and wrist. Nigel Ogden also had frostbite on his face and dislocated his shoulder. The rest of the crew and passengers survived with nothing more than shock. Later that day, another plane was sent to Southampton Airport to convey the passengers to their original destination. First officer and co-pilot Alistair Atchison, as well as Nigel Ogden, were awarded the Queen's Commendation for Valuable Service in the Air, and in 1992, Atchison was awarded the Polaris Award for his heroic act. If Alistair Atchison had not managed to keep a cool head while acting fast, there is a very high likelihood that things would have turned out quite differently from how they did. It is remarkable how he managed to expertly take control of a dangerous condition and be able to fly and successfully land a plane. I don't think there is a section of aviation school where they teach you what to do if your plane's windows fly off in midair, so he deserves all the praise that he got. Ogden as well deserved his praise for thinking fast and saving a man's life while putting his own life at risk. Let me know what you think in the comments section below and don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching it. Also, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on engaging content like this one.